So we're jumping right in with this video because Notion just dropped probably my favorite update of 2025. I know that's a big word for actually just a small update, but I think this one has the potential to completely change the way the new use Notion. So over the next few minutes, I want to make the case why this is actually such a big deal. And then we have a bunch of other really cool updates in the pipeline as well. Now, the update I'm talking about are tabbed groups. And if you don't yet use Notion in the desktop app, then this hopefully makes you finally switch because they are really powerful. And in order to get them, you need to be in the desktop app. Once you're in the desktop app, you will find this new feature in the top left corner here, this little icon. If I click on it, you see that it tells me first that in this window, I have currently four ungrouped tabs. And then I have already set up a few groups for a few client projects that show up here. For you, this will be empty if you don't have anything yet. And basically the way this works is that I can now switch between a set of tabs, right? Sort of like uh, pinned pages in Notion that I want to navigate to. So I could go to this client one, right? And now I have my, uh, and jump actually in this client workspace, right? Because that's the page I've opened here. And you see, I have a different set of tabs up here. And I can switch back to my ungrouped section here. Now, by default, everything will be in the ungrouped section. But I'm going to walk you through now how you can set one up and the little cool things that you can do with this. To set up your first tab group or just a new one, click on the icon and then on this new empty group option. Once here, you can give this a name. So in this case, for this example, let's set up a YouTube tab group and help me uh, with my YouTube videos. And I'm going to select this uh, icon to indicate it. And now uh, once I click out of this, well, I can switch to my new tab group and you see it's pretty empty. The one thing that we'll do is we'll open the last page that I had open otherwise, right, which was the one in the client workspace, but we're going to change this in a second. Now I just changed the page and now I am in one of my private workspaces uh, with my actual YouTube content pipeline. So this is the actual uh, super simple database that I use to track uh, my YouTube videos. And uh, this of course is very real, like that is basically my content calendar. So in when I'm in my tab group, but I wanna have this always front and center. Now, not like only can I have this just as a regular tab, but uh, what I would recommend is that you right click this and pin this tab. This is the same functionality as before, right? If you have a pinned tab in Notion, it remains here as this little icon. And the cool thing is that if you ever click out of it, right? So let's say, for example, we're opening the uh, pretty empty video card for this video and I'm opening this in a full page, you see that you jump out of it. In uh, it, So it basically keeps always this one tab around, right? And whenever you open something that would navigate away from it, it just creates a new page. Super useful for these central pages, right? That you otherwise keep navigating back to because you always need them. So that's the first thing that we want to do. And then the second thing is I'm going to go to my now company workspace and go in there to uh, also pin the demo area. So on the second page, I am in my company workspace, right? And here's the sort of YouTube container page that I just use to whenever we have any of these videos, right? We need to demo something, create new pages in it uh, so we can have some sort of like a clean setup for it. And of course, that's also very relevant when I film videos and I want to have it always present. So I'm going to right click this again, right? And pin the tab. And now we start maybe seeing how this all comes together. Right, I have now basically my YouTube setup that I can switch to and I have the most used pages that I always need here uh, at my fingertips. And I can switch back to my just general work area, right? Where I might have a bunch of other tabs open uh, and then by switching it, right, I have always the right context in front of me. If you've ever organized your browser with different spaces, profiles, and folders uh, around your core bookmarks, then you know how powerful this is. It's hard to describe uh, just in isolation, so I would recommend that you try it out, but it's basically the same principle. So here I'm in my Arc browser, right, which unfortunately is no longer too supported. Very, very sad, but it's to date the best browser I found. And it's so amazing because you have all the different uh, spaces where you need all the, your most used uh, things at a fingertip, just a lot more convenient than previously in other browsers. You can also switch between different profiles right, with different logins. Um, and that's kind of what Notion does now too. So this is all nice, right? But why do I think that this might be actually the most important update of 2025? Right? It's, it's all nice, cool. You can now group things, right? You can switch between your different tabs. But if you're a person that has 100 tabs open anyway at all times, like, what's the point? Well, I would say that this has the potential to fix one of Notion's biggest weaknesses besides permissions. Uh, but this big weakness I'm talking about is the sidebar, right? I actually don't like how inflexible our sidebar is with Notion. The second you build more complex workflows, right? Particularly for um, client situations, you'll realize that uh, the fact that you can't really modify what's here except for the favorites is a really big nuisance, right? This Most of your sidebar gets auto-generated by the pages that are on uh, entry, right? So if I, if I look at my backend, right? If I open that, I just see all the databases uh, inside of it. And I can't really reorganize them without changing the location that they're actually in the system. 
That means if we want to build, uh, you know, our professional scalable Notion uh, solutions for companies and teams, we need on the one hand to stick to a best practice when it comes to the database architecture, but that often interferes with the navigation on the site. The way you typically solve this, right, is by building navigation on your pages, right? So you have your, maybe your two column layout, right, where you have uh, this little call out here on the right, right? You call this navigation and then you have uh, the quick links to all these pages. And that's, of course, helpful, right? That's a, that's a good idea and a good best practice to have. But the tab groups have the uh, you know opportunity to add now another layer of navigation to Notion to fix this fairly inflexible sidebar. Now the world is of course your oyster, right? When it comes to these new tab groups, but here are four different methodologies that I would recommend you try out for them. The first one is the most simple one, right? And it's basically setting up different tab groups for different areas in your life, which will most likely be personal and work, right? But you might have also maybe different gigs, maybe different jobs, right? Or different areas in your personal life that you would want to group on, right? So now you could just set up a tab group for every single one of them, pin your central pages, find your dashboard that you use a notion to navigate in, and then just keep by the, uh, through that everything uh, in one space whenever you need that specific one. The second option is the one that you sort of like saw like in the beginning of being flashed out in my workspace where I'm still working on my tab groups, but it's organizing it by work spheres. The fact that you can have in your different tab groups, different workspaces is so useful because I think I have, I'm in like more than 30 or probably at this point 50 workspaces uh, in Notion. And that means switching between them a lot, right? In particular, when you do client projects. So the fact that I can have a different workspace for every single client, right? That opens automatically our coordination page with them, our database backend, and all the other pages that I frequently have to visit when I do work there is so, so helpful. And of course, while it's still keeping your internal one in this agency kind of setup. The third one is a very simple one, again, right, or more like this personal organization, by topics. Right? So in my case, right, would probably be something like a YouTube studio if I was still in university, right, might have one, the second one, where all my pages are grouped together for their part, and then personal finance. Or, right, an oldie but a goodie, Para, right, amazing for this kind of top-level organization, having different tab groups for your projects, areas, resources, and your archive. Just a quick last way you might have putting this before we move on to the next update, and that's that I want you to basically think of um, this as additional uh, initial dimension, right? So uh, you have your primary organization dimensions, which are your database and dashboards, right? So your project roadmap, your sprint board, your tasks, and so on and so on, right? And then you have the uh, ongoing context of in what situation you need to see this, right? So for your daily ops, uh, you might create a different tab group where you see your today view, right? And the team tasks. Or when you want to do something specifically for research, right? You might have some different uh, elements that you want to show and they're pulling from the rest of the organizational system in your notion. The next one is a quick one, but a great one. If you have LinkedIn Premium, then you can actually get six months of Notion Plus for free. The, I'll add a link to that in the description. Super cool, new park, and very easy to try out the new premium features. Also, if you have some friends, right, who are sort of like uh, not uh, hesitant a bit maybe on jumping on the paid Notion plan, well, this I think is a great starting offer. The next update makes it easier to be on top of your to-do list, and that is thanks to a new reminder function. As you know, whenever you have a date property in Notion, you could go in right and say uh, individually remind, you know, on the day and so on and so on. But it is very cumbersome because who has the time to click three times, right, for every date? Luckily, we can now set a default reminder for date properties. And to do so, we simply hover over our date property and we click on edit property and here you see notifications. And on here, you can now set up like uh, currently from limited options, but at least some, uh, when you should get a Notion a notification for these, right? The little red things that pop up here on the side. Again, it's not the best way, right? Because uh, Notion notifications are super noisy and it's not really great experience to manage uh, them if you're in a very big workspace, but better than nothing. For some more robust solutions, I have some links below in the description. We have some really cool things that we can do with automated reminders via emails or creating custom push notifications for your form. AI is also moving incredibly fast and this next one will help us make even more of it. If you use ChatGPT or Claude, you can now create a default connection to Notion, making it easier than ever, right, to take AI actions inside of it. To do so, simply log into either ChatGPT or uh, Claude, right, and then in both situations you will have this option to add a connector. The UI changes all the time, but pretty much always works through some sort of setting, right, and I'm here clicking on Add Connector. And here we can now see uh, that we have a Notion as an option. So I can click on that and then uh, we can see that I can uh, authorize uh, Claude to access it directly and basically take all the API actions that are available to us for us, which means we can retrieve databases to get, for example, all our open tasks for a day 
or change due dates on uh, entries, uh, move things around, create new entries, really, the world is your oyster. I have a full detailed walkthrough of how this exactly works uh, in the section and the comments, uh, sorry, in the description below. Um, there I show like a slightly older method, right? It was a little bit more complex to set up. For now, you can do it super easily, either with Claude or ChatGPT. Definitely recommend you give this a try. Now, just one important word of warning. When you connect Notion to ChatGPT or Claude, that means AI, well, can directly influence your things there. So you want to be very careful with A, what pages you get access to, and then what prompts you use it to, you know, have it take actions. You definitely don't want to do something like, you know, like, please overwrite all the existing information there. So be careful, just give it access to specific areas in the specific databases. It should uh, modify and then be very precise with your instructions. Kind of if you hire an intern, right, to do things for you. Speaking of AI, one of my favorite things with Notion AI is that it connects to other tools, right, to then also answer my questions based on the information that we have there. And another one, just joint ranks, Linear is now available. So if parts of your company right, works in Linear, you can now authorize Notion AI to also query that and then help answer, for example, you know, what are the biggest blockers this week? The next one is very easy to miss unless you <laughs> spend a lot of time in Notion. And that is, we have now hover cards and kind of profile pages in Notion. If you add mention any user in your workspace and you hover over that, you see that you now get this little pop-up with their profile picture and, you know, the name of the team they're in plus the local time. And I can click on that to open their page, right? So I could now change my cover, right, since I'm the user here. And I see both uh, if I work a lot with specific people, it takes a while for this to show up. And um, we can see the team space that I have access to uh, in this workspace. And we can see my recent activities. So all the things that I did, right, while I was working here um, on this video. Pretty neat, pretty cool. I'm excited to see what Notion is going to also build into these profile pages. If you have to work a lot with data that originates outside of Notion, then you're going to love this update. Basically, CSV imports have gotten a lot better. To trigger this, you can either click on the three dots down here, say import, or three dots in the top right corner, scroll down to import, and then uh, choose CSV as your source. Once you then have selected your file, you can move on to map your CSV headers. Basically, Notion will read the uh, file and try to figure out, okay, what kind of properties do you need here? So if you're setting up a new database, uh, it all lets you do it from scratch, right? It sees the first row and will use the setters. And we can say, okay, what should be the title property, right? And what should be the other properties? So we can say, for example, maybe our total price in USD, right? Maybe actually, for whatever reason, we don't want this as a number, right? We want this as um, a checkbox property or we don't want to import it all the way. And we see here on the side, right, a live preview of the data from our CSV and how it would come through super powerful and then when we're ready we can click on import csv it will pull it in and pretty much the same process also works when you then have already an existing database right i could now go in here say merge with csv again select a file right uh, choose this database that i have here as the import location and then when a new csv file comes in even if the, the header names are different i can then map them in the right way so that you know even if it has been renamed to customer in the meantime it goes in the right column and all your property information gets carried over the right way. Saves a lot of time if you don't want to build, you know, like some small automations or scripts to do this job. To wrap up this video, just two quick remarks. You can always find all of these Notion updates, whether small or large, on my website at matthiasfrank.de slash Notion updates. We have a running log of literally everything that happens in Notion, right? So you're never out of the loop and always know what the latest changes are. Plus then, of course, if you need any help implementing this for your company or team, then check out our consulting offers at matthiasfrank.de slash Notion Consulting. We have a lot of cool stuff going on there and we love working with ambitious teams. So check out the link in the description and yeah, uh, see you in the next video. We'll have a few more cool things planned for the next few weeks.